Legendary money manager Peter Lynch once said that insiders might sell their shares for any number of reasons, but they buy for only one. They think the price will rise. If you're using insider trades as your go-to indicator for trading stocks, you might want to know that while it may be a valuable signal, they aren't always foolproof. Sometimes investors sell simply to take advantage of a good opportunity. Today, we're going to talk about why insider trades are important, when you should follow them, how to find them, and how to profit from them. Let's dive in. Hello, today we are welcoming back Market Beat's very own Thomas Hughes. We're going to be discussing insider trades. Thomas, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Lacey. Thanks for having me back. I hope you're doing well. I am. I'm glad to have you back. I'm looking forward to today's talk. So let's just jump right into it. Insider trades, they're a big part of the data that we provide our readers at Market Beat. So I'm wondering if you can give us a brief explanation of what insider trades are and where we can find that information. Yeah, insider trades are any buying or selling of stock that are made by a company's insiders. Insiders include executives, directors, and major shareholders. Uh, you can assume that they have the most knowledge, the most complete knowledge of a company's operations. So when they start buying or selling, it can be a, a significant signal for the market. Mm -hmm. Now, the place to find that is on the Market Beat website. So if you look here, this is the stock page for Apple. And right here in the tab, you see insider trades, and it'll give you the information about how much of the stock is owned by the company, how many insiders are buying, how many are selling, how much they've sold over the last year or so, and which insiders are selling. So here we can see that the chief financial officer, the chief operating officer, a senior vice president, and a CEO have all been selling stock. So how do we know when they're important and when they're not? I'm referencing that quote from Peter Lynch. Right. So insider sales are important, but you have to take that with a grain of salt. Remember that uh, insiders are restricted in their operations. They can't just buy and sell at a whim. So it takes a little bit of um, interpretation to know when it's a good, a good sign or a bad sign. In the case of insider selling, a lot of companies pay their employees with shares, share-based compensation. So these companies will often have a history of insider sales. Recognize this, as we just saw with Apple, when you see a wide, a wide number of insiders selling on a regular basis in small amounts, that's not really a red flag. That's just selling the shares that they've been paid with to recoup mm -hmm. some of their salaries. Now, if all of a sudden Tim Cook sells all the stock that he owns or most of the stock that he owns, you might think, hey, he sees something bad on the horizon. And that's when it would be a bad sign. Gotcha. All right. I've got so, a, well, I'm sorry, Lacey. I've got a couple of stocks that we can look at too. I want to see them. Right. We'll start with Altair Engineering. This is a high performance cloud computing stock supported by the, the shift to the cloud, which is a very strong trend. It's rated a buy by the analyst. The price target is trending higher. The institutions own 66% and are buyers. So in this case, insider selling isn't a big deal. This is uh, the effect of share-based compensation. This stock is still trending higher and expected to move higher. Likewise, HCA Healthcare, supported by health trends, rated a moderate buy. The price target is firming. It offers a value, it's growing, supported by healthcare trends, has institutional support. So once again, a little bit of insider selling, especially when the price is tickling all-time highs, isn't really a red flag. We should expect insiders to take some profits off the table at, at these levels. Also, JBL, this is an undervalued blue chip te tech company. It's fundamental to the manufacturing industry. It's outperforming expectations, it's growing. The analysts are supporting it. The price target is trending higher. So once again, you can see insider sales aren't that big a deal. All right. So we're talking about insider selling. What about insider buying? Does that, when the insiders are buying, is it always a buy signal then? Or what's the deal with that? So that's a big question, Lacey. Let's see if I can give you a big answer. At face value, insiders really only have one reason to buy a stock, and that's because they think it will go higher. The question is, is that belief founded in reality? 
Sometimes you can get a CEO or an insider who is emotionally attached to their business and will try to support the stock and try to fight the market. In these scenarios, you'll need to, <clears throat> need to pay, pay attention to the news cycle because mm -hmm. that will become evident if the analysts don't support a stock, if the institutions aren't buying it, if it's not performing well and the insiders are still buying, that might not be a stock that you want to follow the insiders into. But conversely, if this company is growing, if the institutions are buying, if the analysts support it and insiders are buying, that's probably a signal that you want to follow. All right. Makes sense. All right. So the takeaway here, I think, is that while insider trades can provide useful signals for investors, they don't always tell the whole story. They aren't foolproof. And that's the case for the stocks we men mentioned earlier today. They're not a red flag. So it's always important to look at the bigger picture, right, Thomas? The big picture is very important, Lacey. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your insights, Thomas. I think this is a good one. Okay. Thanks, Lacey. I'll see you next time.